Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eirik Arneson. Welcome back to Florence and welcome back into the studio. Today we are forging on with our portrait. This is the fifth session of me working on this project. That means there are four previous episodes you should check out as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that if you enjoy my content, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn how to do this stuff, check out my Patreon page, which you can find at a link in the description below. Now, let's get into it. The moment we find ourselves in right now, there are stuff missing from our portrait. We strike a delicate balance at all times between adding more information and fixing or improving the information we have presently available to us. When to choose which to pursue, uh, that's a big deal. There's no correct answer as far as time goes, for example, that I can give you here. How long you're supposed to spend with one set of information before adding more. No answer is going to be truly satisfactory to you. All I can really say is when your ability to improve the information present is spent, you should add more information. You have to make truly sure, however, that the information present has been pushed as far as you can manage. Your ability to improve what you have should truly be spent. This can be a little bit difficult to judge when you're a beginner, but with experience, you get a much finer tuned sense of when this is the case, when it's time to move on and add more information, more complexity to the image. As an example that's easy to illustrate in the beginning, when I had nothing, I started by finding and deciding where the ear hole was going to be, more or less. And I related the chin to the brow ridge and to the ear hole. So that's three pieces of information. Once these three pieces of information were doing what I needed them to do, I moved on and started building my profile in earnest. But I only moved on once these three simple points in space were established well. For me, the same time has come now in regards to the eyes. It's time for me to pursue the making of the eyes, which means adding more information, of course. The eyes are very delicate work, even here at the early beginning. I'm not going to, at any point, put on a lot of clay at once, as this covers up carefully and deliberate work that I've done constructing the eyes. Never will you see me throw a large piece of clay into an area as delicate as the eyes, especially not as we progress here. It's going to be smaller pieces of clay and it's going to be a little bit slow progress. We started the eyes last episode, of course, so you can check that video out to learn more how to begin the eyes. Essentially, they begin by sculpting a profile of the eye along its high point, which runs down the middle of the eye. This profile must function well within the eye socket, so before I begin thinking about sculpting the eye, I'm making sure my eye socket functions well. The eye sockets are part of the skull, so as the width of the skull structure expands, so does the width of the eye socket. The corner of the forehead, where the frontal bone meets the zygomatic bone, is one of the four points on the skull which we use to build the widths from. Once the structure of the skull is at the correct width, the eye sockets should be ready to receive the eyes. Remember that there is strategy involved in several places when it comes to sculpture. One of the places a strategy is employed is around the eye sockets. Their depths, the depths of the eye sockets, are going to be slightly more than what I will eventually end up needing. This is because it's very easy to move them forwards and it's much easier to make this call once the eyes have been placed within the eye sockets. It's very hard to pull them backwards into the skull, but forwards towards the profile, 
This is easy, and it's only addition of clay in places where heights and angles already have been established. As long as the ice is represented by a profile and nothing more, it's very easy to pull it forwards towards the profile as well. Without the eye, accurately judging the depth of the eye sockets can be difficult because we are missing context. The eyes provide that context for us. In a similar vein, the lower edge of the eye sockets gets underbuilt as well. This is because the information present below the eye is much taller than most of us would think. Even if we know about this need for space below the eye itself, it's easy to get this distance wrong. And again, it's much easier to pull this lower edge of the eye socket upwards compared to trying to dig into the clay to bring it downwards. Without enough space between the eyeball itself and the lower edge of the eye socket, we run the risk of having big issues making sure the planes present below the eye are facing at the right angle. More space gives us the chance to set these planes up accurately before closing this height down to its final dimension by bringing the lower edge of the eye socket a few millimeter upwards. Remember that addition of clay is almost always going to be easier to deal with in comparison to removal of clay. So we strategically underbuild certain things to facilitate this addition and minimize the chance for the need of removal. 